Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and actually to part number four of the ultimate guide to Kotlin flows. In this last video of this playlist, I will actually show you how you can unit test your flows. Because in pretty much every project, you will have to deal with flows. And that means you will also have to unit test these if you actually want to do it right. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I am still in the project of the last video. And what we are now going to do is, if you remember, we have that countdown flow, which basically just has a starting value here of five and then simply counts down. And I would actually like to write a unit test for this flow to actually test if the countdown is properly working. So if we're properly counting down just second by second, and this is not really trivial because you know, there is some kind of delay that we wouldn't like to have in our unit tests. There are different emissions here at different times and there's just some stuff going on so this type of unit test is not super easy you will fully understand that in a few minutes so let's actually first include some more dependencies that we need to unit test that so in our build a gradle app file you will have to include these dependencies which you can find in my github repository down below Let's go through these. On the one hand, we have turbine. This is actually an optional dependency here, but it's, it's a dependency I use in almost all of my projects. So it's actually a library that makes testing flows extremely easy. You will see why that is. Then I use truth. That's a Google library that comes with a lot better testing assertions than the default JUnit assertions. And we have Kotlin X coroutines test, which just comes with some test functionality that we need to properly test coroutines. And in the end, a flow is nothing else than a coroutine that can emit multiple values over a period of time, if you remember that from the first video. Let's synchronize this and then hop into our view model and actually put the cursor on main view model press alt plus uh, insert it is and then we can select test to simply generate a test case for that i would call it uh, main, view, main view model test make sure to select jnode 4 and we would like to have a setup function which is just called before every single test case then let's hit ok we want to generate that in our test source set so that's not an android test we don't need any Android dependencies like the context or so to run this test. No, we would like to have local unit tests. So clicking OK. And there we go. If we extend these imports, we can simply remove this JUnit assert import because as I said, we will use the truth library to handle that. And I hope you're a little bit familiar to testing. If not, then I can really suggest watching my testing playlist first um, because testing flows is probably not the the right entry point for unit testing at all, um, like unit testing in general. So first of all, we're just going to declare the object under test. So what do we want to test in this test class? And that's our view model. So private late init var view model of type main view model. Then in setup, we would like to initialize that view model or reinitialize that before every single test case. So just to make sure that we have a brand new view model you can say for every single test case we don't want that a test case fails because there is still some state in the view model from a previous test case so we say main view model and then we're actually ready to write our test case we can annotate the function for that with at test and since that's a local unit test i like to have these two backticks and name my function with basically natural words and sentences. That's pretty cool in Kotlin. So what do we want to test? We want to test the countdown flow. And we basically want to test that it properly counts down from five to zero. So that's what our test case is actually about. So basically how this now has to look like, we need to trigger our flow. We need to collect it. And then we basically need to check every single second if the emission is correct. <laughs> so, so far for the theory. Let's see how this now works. 
As I said, we included that turbine dependency, which is a very awesome library. Since uh, because of because of that library, we can now simply say view model. Um, we want to test our countdown flow, and that library now came with a function called test. So that's a function you can now call on any type of flow. And here in that, you get a so-called flow turbine. And the cool thing is, if we would now just want to wait for an emission in that flow, we can say val emission is equal to await item. So this will now suspend this block of code until it actually gets, a, gets an item here. So as soon as we actually emit the starting value, this await item function would assign the starting value to our emission, in that case, 5. And if we would now call await item again, it would wait for the next emission. So that would then be this emission. So it would emit the current value minus minus, so 4. Just the next value that was counted down. So that's pretty cool. We still get an error here, because it's that's a suspend function that we can't execute directly in our test case. There was luckily a very easy solution to that. Whenever you test coroutines in test cases, you use run blocking. Run blocking is something you typically would never use in a real app because it blocks your actual main thread. But in the test case, you want that. You don't want that the test case finishes before a coroutine that was launched in it. So that's why we use run blocking to actually block the test case. So run blocking. And suddenly the error goes away. So what do we actually now want to do? I will actually delete this emission again. And we actually want to have a loop here. For i in, let's say, 5 down to 0. Because that's what our countdown actually reflects. It counts down from 5 to 0. And with these i's, we can now check if the actual value, the actual emission, is equal to that i in the corresponding iteration. So, we want to say val emission is equal to await item. Now we want to make sure that this item is actually the same as i. So in the first iteration of this loop, it should be 5, which is the value of i. and the second iteration, it should be 4, which is the value of i in the second iteration, and so on. I think you get it. And because we use the truth library, we can make assertions in a way, very readable way. You can assert that, import that, Choose the truth one here. We want to assert that this emission is equal to i. And that's now how this works. So we just await five items in total and make sure that the item is equal to i. However, there's still something wrong with this code. Because right now, every time we run the test, it would actually take five seconds to run because we have the delay block in here. And that's of course not optimal. Let's say you would have a countdown timer of five minutes. Then you don't want your test case to run five minutes to see if everything works. So how can we actually prove this? Or rather, make sure this is actually a real unit test that's quick. And now I actually come to a very important concept of Android. Something you should always stick to. And that is you should always inject your coroutine dispatchers wherever you need them. The reason for that is that for test cases, if we would actually like to skip delays, we need a special test coroutine dispatcher. Because with that test dispatcher, we can just say in the test case, OK, now you should actually skip one second and it will skip that. So our test case will basically ignore delays. But to make that work, our coroutines in our main view model actually have to use that dispatcher and by default they just use the main dispatcher. In local unit tests we don't have access to the main dispatcher because that's yeah it's related to the main looper which only exists on real Android devices and since the local unit tests run on the JVM not an, on not on an emulator there is no main dispatcher. So right now if you would run this it would most likely just crash. You can see here we get an exception and it says module with main dispatcher had failed to initialize, blah, 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 blah. 
So the reason for that is just that we don't have that main dispatcher in local unit tests, but that's the default dispatcher for all coroutines. So how can we fix that? As I said, we want to inject our dispatchers. Let's do this step by step, and then it will actually be clear. First of all, we want to go to our root package, not our test package, our root package, and create a Kotlin class called dispatcher provider. That will be an interface. And in this interface, we define the different dispatchers we would like to use in our project. Typically, that's on the one hand main, IO, and default. So now we have that interface, which just abstracts out these coroutine dispatchers. And we can now co create concrete implementations of that. So we can simply do that right here and say we have a class default dispatchers that we use in our actual Android project. Make sure that implements dispatcher provider. We can press control I, select everything here and override that. And here we can just assign our normal dispatcher. So main for main, IO for IO, and default for default. Dispatchers IO, and finally dispatchers default. Now, if we go to our view model, we now want to inject these dispatchers. So that means we provide our dispatchers here, which is now an instance of dispatcher provider. So this dispatchers provider interface now contains the actual dispatchers we want to use. So now, since we did this, we also need to apply these dispatchers for all of our coroutines that potentially run here. To do that for a flow, we can simply say flow on, and now we can say dispatchers main. So since in our real app, we will use these default dispatchers, this dispatcher's main will just refer to the normal dispatcher's main. However, we can now create a different version of this dispatcher provider for our test cases that uses the test dispatcher for all of these. And then our view model will suddenly use the test dispatchers for everything. So let's also make sure that our other routines use that dispatcher's main, dispatcher's main, and probably in square number here as well. This patch is main. And of course for the other ones down here as well, but I'll leave these because we don't call this here. So won't lead to a problem. This um, gives us a warning, which comes from a linting tool. We can ignore this here um, and jump back to our main view model test. Now you can see when we create that view model, we actually need a parameter. Now we need to provide some kind of test dispatchers here. So in our test source set, let's open that. We now create a new Kotlin class called test dispatchers, which also implements that dispatcher provider interface. Control I, Control A, and enter. And now here we want to use a special test dispatcher. So we can declare that here. And Set it to new test coroutine dispatcher. We need to add this experimental blah 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 annotation. And now for all of these dispatchers, we simply pass our test dispatcher. And when we now use such a test dispatchers class in, instead of this default dispatchers class for our view model, then in our test cases, we suddenly use this test dispatcher for everything in our view model, like for, for this flow, for this view model scope here, because for the test dispatcher, the main one uh, refers to the test dispatcher. So that's how this works. So let's have that here. Let in it var. Um, test dispatchers. And here we simply pass these test dispatchers when we construct a review model. And now what we can do is, since with that we already make sure that this flow uses our test dispatcher, and we also need this annotation here. Um, let's add that to the class. But we still want to skip the delay here, as I talked about. 
And for that, we can now simply use our test dispatchers, refer to the test dispatcher we use in our review model, and we can use advance time by. So we can now say we want to advance the time by a single second, and then we should actually get an event, or rather an emission here. And we make sure the emission is then equal to i. And something we can also do is, if there are actually more events coming in after the last one here, then it will actually throw an exception. To fix that, we just want to say, cancel and consume remaining events. That just makes sure that we properly finish this test scope here. So if we now relaunch the test case here, take a look down here, then you can see it still failed. <laughs> Late in it, property test dispatches has not been initialized. Oh, of course, I need to do that. So test dispatches is equal to test dispatches. And then let's <laughs> relaunch that and try again. And now you can see the test actually succeeded. So that's pretty cool. But I want to write another test case to show you something you often need to take care of. And that is, I want to actually test the square number function. So let's take a look down here. I'll minimize this. Then all that really happens here is we send an event into the shared flow that squares our number. We want to test that now, that the number is really squared. Of course, that's a super simple example. But let's go to our view model and write a test case for that. Function um, square number number properly squared. I don't know. That's weird naming because that's just such a simple test. Here we again want to use run blocking. And this time we want to listen to events in our shared flow. So we call test on that one. So here we get that emission by using a wait item again. And we actually now need to trigger that sending that event manually. So if we now assert that the mission is equal to, let's say, nine, then nothing will happen because we, of course, need to send that event into that shared flow with the square number function. So let's do that. We say view model square number three. And then we just make sure, okay, we actually expect that the emission is nine. So just the three squared. Let's run this. You can see the test case actually fails. Um, unconsumed events found. Well, it seems like there are some events that were unconsumed, but we actually did consume these here, didn't we? Well, it's the same problem as I already explained in the last video. We sent the event into the shared flow be before we actually run this test block and before we actively wait for the emission. So what happens if we do it afterwards? So actually make sure that we wait for the item and then we send the event while we wait for that. Let's see. Now the test case actually succeeds. However, that does not always need to be the case here with these things where you manually need to trigger an event. Um, so something I actually always suggest is launching this in a separate coroutine. So you can see the test function actually suspends. And I would actually just like to have a job here, say launch, and put that in that job. So that will just make this run independently of this. So it actually doesn't suspend first and then send the event. Instead, it will basically do both simultaneously. Then after the test case, we could say job join. And then we cancel the job. And in here, we could also say cancel and consume remaining events. So if we now relaunch this, then it should also succeed again. And there you go. A test case passed. So that's how you also test shared flows. Um, that's a typical use case here that you first launch a job, then send an event into it, and then simply check whatever that event is. So that's it for unit testing flows. If you especially like these little tips like injecting these dispatchers, which is not something you find all over the internet, but that's actually pretty important. Then you will also love my free email newsletter because there I actually share much more of these, these tips that not many people actually talk about. So you can simply check the link down below and subscribe for that. Just entering your email, rest is free. You will receive regular emails right into your inbox. 
And if you want to learn more about testing, then I also have an ultimate testing guide on YouTube, which is free. If you're interested in that, then you can simply click here and watch that. So enjoy.